We now have all of the results from the Sweet 16, so we know which credit cards are going to be surviving and advancing to the next round, the Elite Eight. So in this video, RJ and I are going to be breaking down the results from the Sweet 16 and the travel and cash back regions and discuss which credit cards are going to be advancing to the next round. I then will take a look at the updated bracket and I'll give my predictions on which credit cards I think are going to win each matchup and advance to the final four. Real quick, if you do enjoy the bracket challenge and other credit card related videos just like this one, then do me a favor and consider subscribing because it's a free and easy way to help support my channel. All right, before we get into all of the results from the travel region, let's first hear from RJ, who's gonna break down all of the results from the cashback region. Hey, Internet, it's RJ, the Credit Card Madness Tournament Commissioner and co-host over on the cashback region. Thank you so much for having me back on the show. This time, we were going to break down the Sweet 16 matchup, see who's out, who's going to advance, and of course, we will talk about the remaining two matchups we'll have going into the Elite Eight. So let's get into it here. If you remember from last week, the City Custom Cash was by far and away a strong number one seed, and that continues because it takes 75.5% of the vote away from the U.S. Bank Cash Plus to put up a valiant effort to sneak into the tournament, uh, but it wasn't enough. City Custom Cash advances. Next matchup you have sees the Chase Freedom Flex versus the seven seed American Express Blue Cash every day. A little bit of a surpriser card on the Amex side, but the surprise ends there because Freedom Flex advances with 62.7% of the vote. Number three matchup, Capital One Saver One Rewards at the three seed versus Discover It Cash at the six seed. Two cards who are gonna be happy under the same banner, company banner, or are they because the Capital One card demolishes Discover? It's soon to be brother or cousin. I was 75.2% of the vote to advance. Now, our most interesting matchup in the cash region was matchup number four. We saw the Chase Freedom Unlimited versus the number five C Chase Amazon Prime card. And as always, Prime does deliver on time. Who doesn't love a good pun? It's still got 52% of the vote to advance to the next round. So that is how the Sweet 16 broke out. A lot of good stuff there. A lot of great cards that I have myself, actually. And I'm good to see some of them advance uh, because your next two matchups you're going to have for the Elite Eight on the cash backside are now set up. And again, we're going to see the number one seed city custom cash square off against the number five seed Chase Amazon Prime card. Then the second matchup, we will see the number two Chase Freedom Flex versus the number three Capital One Saber One Rewards. And there you have it. That is how the cashback side of the bracket is shaping up. Ton of great cards. Going to be really hard for me to pick some, so definitely come and join us over there. Vote for the cashback as well as the travel. Of course, thanks for having me. If you want my full analysis and breakdown and thoughts and a little bit of a rant over on uh, how the cashback is going, and I talk some travel too, of course, all the news you can use in the week that wasn't credit and finance, well, that is youtube.com slash rjfinancial. Hope to see you over there and continue to vote in in the tournament. Thank you very much for those who participate. It has been fun and I'll see you right back here next week to recap it all once again. Okay, let's now take a look at the travel region, take a look at the results and see which credit cards are going to be advancing to the Elite Eight. First up, we have the number one seed Capital One Venture X facing off against the underdog number eight seed US Bank Altitude Reserve. And even though I would have loved to see an upset from the US Bank Altitude Reserve, the Capital One Venture X did end up winning and got about 67% of the vote. The next matchup was the number two seed Chase Sapphire Preferred taking on the number seven seed Hilton Aspire. And same thing, I would have loved to see the Hilton Aspire win this matchup, but the Chase Sapphire Preferred did end up prevailing and won the matchup, getting 58.2% of the vote. Our first upset on the travel side of the tournament happened the number three seed versus number six seed matchup with the number six seed Chase Sapphire Reserve taking down the number three seed American Express Platinum and getting 53% of the vote. Finally, we had a super close matchup in the number four seed versus number five seed matchup but the number four seed American Express Gold card barely squeaking it out and taking down the number four seed built MasterCard as it received 51.6% of the vote. All right, now let's take a look at the Elite Eight and the two new matchups in the travel region. In the first matchup, we have Big Brother versus Little Brother as the number two seed Chase Sapphire Preferred takes on the number six seed Chase Sapphire Reserve. And then in the second matchup, we have the number one seed Capital One Venture Rex looking to defend its title against the pesky number four seed American Express Gold card. Okay, before I give my predictions for those new Elite Eight matchups, let me talk about the results from the Sweet 16. The first matchup was the number one seed at Capital One Venture X taking on the number eight seed at US Bank Altitude Reserve. And this matchup was the matchup that was decided by the largest margin on the travel side 
and honestly, the matchup was never really that close, with the Adventure X beating the US Bank Altitude Reserve by over 100 votes. This is typically what you would expect from a normal number one seed versus number eight seed matchup, but I was expecting this matchup to be a little bit closer. But I will say, US Bank is definitely still a little bit more niche of a credit card issuer, so the popularity of the Capital Adventure X is definitely what allowed for this strong win. The next matchup was the number two seed, Chase Sapphire Preferred, taking on the number seven seed, Hilton Aspire. I personally voted for the Hilton Aspire, and I was really hoping this was going to be one of the first major upsets of the tournament because let's be honest the Hilton Aspire is a much better card and has way more value than the Chase Sapphire Preferred. This did end up being a closer matchup than the 1 versus 8 but the number 2 seed Chase Sapphire Preferred did end up prevailing. I think a lot of that could have been due to familiarity with the Aspire card being a bit more niche than a general travel card like the Chase Sapphire Preferred. After that, we had the first upset on the tournament on the travel side with the six seed Chase Sapphire Reserve beating the number three seed American Express Platinum. Going into the Sweet 16, I really thought this was anyone's game and I wouldn't be surprised to see either of these credit cards win. And in some ways, this matchup almost came down to whether you were a Chase or American Express fan. And if you were willing to take a much more hands-on approach with the American Express Platinum and manage all of the credits, versus taking a much more simple approach with the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Overall, it's always cool to see an upset, so it'll be fun to see a number six seed advance to the Elite Eight. Finally, the last matchup was the number four seed American Express Gold, taking on the number five seed Built MasterCard. This ended up being the closest matchup with the American Express Gold card barely winning and taking over 51% of the vote. This did honestly surprise me a little bit because I definitely expected the American Express Gold card to win by a larger margin, but I guess enough people really value using the built card for rent and utilizing the really strong travel partners. However, again, the Amex Gold card ultimately prevailed and is going to be moving on to the Elite Eight. All right, so now we have our Elite Eight matchup set, and those are going to be the number six seed Chase Sapphire Reserve versus the number two seed Chase Sapphire Preferred and the number one seed Capital One Venture X versus the number four seed American Express Gold. That first matchup is going to be really interesting because it's basically a big brother versus little brother in terms of the Sapphire Reserve versus the Sapphire Preferred. However, in this case the little brother is actually going to be the higher seed with the number two seed chase sapphire preferred taking on the underdog at number six seed chase sapphire reserve despite the seeds i really think this matchup is completely up for grabs and is really anyone's game because even though i'm someone who has the chase sapphire preferred and i really don't have any plans anytime in the future to upgrade to the chase sapphire reserve i definitely do see the validity for some of you who are willing to pay a higher annual fee for some of the additional travel benefits on the sapphire reserve which does include that 50% higher redemption value when you book travel through the Chase Travel Portal which makes the Sapphire Reserve a great way to increase your floor. If we move on to the other matchup, we have both Capital One and American Express being represented with the number one seed Capital One Venture X taking on the number four seed American Express Gold. As a reminder, in the Sweet 16, the Venture X absolutely destroyed their matchup and won with relative ease, whereas the Amex Gold kind of struggled a little bit and barely pulled away in the end. The Amex Gold card has been somewhat controversial recently and a lot of people have decided to move away from it. However, despite limitations with Capital One, the Venture X still remains a really popular travel card. So because of that, I do expect the Capital One Venture X to win this matchup and move on to the Final Four, and I do expect them to do that with a little bit of cushion too. All right, so in terms of what's next, RJ and I both have links to the travel and cashback region voting down in the description, so it's up to you to vote on these matchups and who you think deserves to advance. Next week at the same time, we're gonna be back at you with another video where we're gonna break down the results from the Elite Eight and preview the upcoming Final Four matchups. So as always, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and happy voting. Peace.